What's up nootropics lovers, my name is Monsol and I'm with Neutropedia and today we're going to talk about nootropics and aging. How we can use nootropics to either halt the aging process, reverse the aging process, or just make our aging process more effective so that we don't have struggles with disease and other chronic problems. According to Dr. Daniel Stickler, who I recently had on a Q&A panel during my documentary screening, he said that we haven't had a big win in the anti-aging community just yet. According to him, there hasn't been anything that has been a really big motivator to put more money into this anti-aging, but once we have this, there's a good bet that we'll come up with some technologies that will be successful in the future. That being said, there are a few things that we can do to improve the aging process currently and they start with mitochondrial health. Now as many of you may know, I'm a big proponent of different nootropics that improve the health of our mitochondria. And for those who don't know, the mitochondria are essentially the powerhouses in each of our cells that create ATP or energy in order to do more work. Now some of my favorite nootropics that improve mitochondrial health include basic things like creatine monohydrate, just simply taking five grams a day, then CoQ10 or coenzyme Q10, and PQQ. I'm also a really big fan of different lifestyle habits, not just nootropics that we can use to improve mitochondrial health as well. One of which is near infrared light, which I use through a juve light at home, but then also fasting, which is a completely free practice that improves the health of our mitochondria. Now when we look at the studies for nootropics and anti-aging, there are a number that focus specifically on animals. And I want to be clear that just because a nootropic focuses on the anti-aging benefits of animals doesn't mean that it is applicable to humans. So we have to take all of this data with a grain of salt, but it could show mechanisms that are similar for humans that can have maybe a more subtle effect for humans. One of these examples is rhodiola rosea, which was studied as an adaptogenic herb. It's been used for thousands of years in places like Scandinavia, and a specific study focused on how it could improve the longevity of nematodes by about 24%. Now the problem with nematodes is the further we get away from humans on the evolutionary ladder, the harder it is to draw the corollary. That's why monkey studies can be so effective, but sometimes are still not indicative of how it will impact humans. Another compound which I'm a big proponent of is called sulforaphane and there is a specific study that suggests it can help improve the lifespan of red beetles by anywhere between 13 to 20 percent. Now again, just like the nematodes, red beetles are so far removed from humans it's hard to say whether there is a comparison. However, it is interesting nonetheless, especially when you consider that sulforaphane has benefits for a wide variety of different things like cancer, a neurological decline, etc. Another one is EGCG, which is one of the main uh, green tea catechins, basically an extract of green tea, which many people consider to be a great nootropic compound for anti-aging. In fact, some animal studies suggest that it could improve longevity by up to 20%. Now I want to wrap up these different anti-aging nootropics by talking about a couple for different reasons. One is nicotinamide riboside and the reason I include this is because it does improve mitochondrial health but it also helps with DNA synthesis and reprogramming our DNA. Also a popular anti-aging or purported anti-aging nootropic is resveratrol. Now in my opinion it is completely lacking in scientific data to suggest that it could be beneficial for anti-aging. What is there currently is relatively hard to decipher. There's both evidence that it can help and evidence that it doesn't help. So in my suggestion, I would just avoid resveratrol. 
Now finally, I want to wrap up this video by just bringing to light a few of the experimental methods that people are using in order to tackle aging with different nootropics and supplementation. Two of them are metformin and rapamycin, which both have some evidence to suggest that they can be effective for both animals and humans. Now both rapamycin and metformin are prescription drugs and the way that we know that they can be effective in the aging process is because there are numerous studies or at least a few different studies that suggest you know cancer patients or you know diabetic patients that use these drugs actually improve other markers like longevity as well now if you are planning on taking either of these medications, it's important for you to speak with a medical professional. My specific recommendation would be Dr. Daniel Stickler because he does understand nootropics and he does have a mind for enhancing cognitive performance as opposed to simply treating sickness. But metformin and rapamycin are quite risky, so keep that in mind. They're prescription drugs, we don't know all the side effects, and we don't have all the human trials that can help you to determine whether it's something you want to just pull off the shelf and start using. The final couple therapies that I'm really interested in aren't necessarily nootropics, but one of them is to use stem cell therapy to help the regeneration of different parts of the body. Now, if you look at aging over the long term, basically it's the degradation of many different types of cells, joints, all aspects of our body start to degrade over time just like machinery. But if we can use stem cells to regenerate or rejuvenate certain parts, then it's really effective for anti-aging. Now stem cell therapy is honestly not very feasible for most people financially, but it is something that will continue to get cheaper and cheaper and maybe be one of the big wins within the aging community. But barring the financial means to do some kind of stem cell therapy or even some kind of blood transfusion therapy, my suggestion is simply focus on your mitochondrial health. Improving your mitochondrial health is not going to do any kind of harm in most cases and it's going to help you on the short term and also hopefully in the long term. So mitochondrial health, things like creatine, CoQ10, PQQ, like I mentioned earlier. Anyway guys, hope that's been useful. If you want to use nootropics for aging, now you know. Oh, 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 oh